is good, everybody? Welcome back to another My Damn Toys video. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we have your WWE Money in the Bank 2021 full show review and results for you guys. As you guys know, we're going to run through the entire WWE Money in the Bank pay-per-view, breaking down the action, letting you guys know all my thoughts about the show, what took place, what happened, where I think we'll go from here, let you guys know my own personal thoughts and opinions on everything that took place at the show. And coming into the show, man, was really excited, was really excited because crowds are back at this show. Money in the Bank is probably my favorite stipulation outside of maybe the Royal Rumble, you know, Elimination Chamber, things like that. I love the element of surprise and just the greatness that is Money in the Bank. So this is just epic, man. I couldn't wait for this show. I think the card was stacked. I was excited for the Men's Money in the Bank match. Tons of great analyzations, tons of rumors going around. This was going to be a fun show, man. Did it live up to the hype? Was it great? Was it garbage? Was it somewhere in between? We're going to dive into the action and find out here today, guys. So let's go ahead and dive into Money in the Bank and see where everything landed. So starting out with our pre-show, guys, we we did have the Usos going after the SmackDown. We did have the Usos going after the SmackDown Tag Team Championships. Rey Mysterio and his son Dom defending their SmackDown Tag Titles here. Wasn't that much looking forward to it just because I'm not the biggest fan of Rey and Dom as a team. Like, I don't know. I'm just not a big fan of Dom. Like, I hope the best for him and everything. I'm just not a fan of his work at this moment. Even though Rey's a legend and everything, I do love him. Usos are obviously one of the GOATs, so I was looking forward to this match in some aspects, but not the most excited for it. However, I did make a predictions video for this. However, my prediction for this matchup was the Usos and they do come out on top. What a, it was a very good match. I'd say this is a fun matchup. Great near falls, great energy from the crowd. And the Usos actually get a sneak victory after I think it was Jimmy. I think Jimmy like put his feet in the ring to help Jay with a roll up or it was vice versa. And the Usos captured the tag titles. I think that makes their seventh championship reign now. Congratulations to them. I guess that Jimmy's not going to pay any consequences. You know, I, I thought coming in, my thought process was let's get all the gold on the bloodline. Let's get all the gold on Roman and his posse just like on MDT Live. That's what they went with, and uh, I kind of agree with it. I kind of like it here. So, Usos are your new SmackDown Tag Title champs, and it was, a, it was a pretty good football game, if you ask me, Brad. All right, guys, so the main show did start off with the women's version of the Money in the Bank matchup, and in this matchup, we had Natalia, Naomi, Liv Morgan, Zelina Vega, Nikki Cross, or Nikki Ash, or Nikki A.S.H., or whatever that god-awful name is, Asuka, Tamina, and Alexa Bliss all squaring off here for the opportunity at the contract. Now, coming into this, I had a lot of ideas in mind. I thought, you know, maybe Liv Morgan was my prediction. I thought that would be a great opportunity for her. I thought Naomi had a shot. I thought Asuka could be another winner. And of course, Alexa Bliss always has to be an option when she's included in these matchups. So those were my thoughts going into the matchup. I thought for sure that one of those four ladies would win it. I was okay with pretty much everyone winning except for maybe Tamina, Vega, Natalia, or Nikki. This matchup was very sloppy in my opinion. It kind of, you know, like it never really got into second gear. I felt like it was a lot of starting off, a lot of people chilling on the outside, a lot of weird stuff. Alexa Bliss went for the hypnotization on Z Zelina Vega, like hypnotized her for a moment, which makes me think logically, like, couldn't she just, you know, hypnotize everybody in the entire matchup and just walk up there and win the briefcase? I don't know. It just, I, I don't know, man. Then they bury Alexa with all the ladders and makes everybody just kind of look dumb. I don't know. What did you guys think about it? I wasn't a very big fan of this matchup. And at the end of the day, Nikki Cross or Nikki Ash, almost superhero Nikki Cross or Nikki wins the, wins the money in the bank. I don't know, man. I felt like there were a lot of better options. I mean, it definitely was a shocker, which I guess I could get bonus points to, but I don't like the gimmick. I don't like, uh, I don't know. It's just very odd to me, man. I'm not a fan of this, uh, this Money in the Bank selection, but what do I know, Brad? Liv, I thought Liv Morgan or Naomi Asuka were much better options. I mean, shoot, even Alexa Bliss, I think, would have been a better option. But Nikki, Nikki, almost superhero, wins the Women's Money in the Bank. Next up, guys, we have the Raw Tag Team Championship match between AJ Styles and Omos defending against the Viking Raiders. My prediction coming into this was AJ Styles and Omos retaining because I think we're eventually going to get RK Bros versus AJ Styles and Omos. And they retained, man. This was a fun one. I think that the Viking Raiders, seeing them on pay-per-view wrestling and not involved in all that, like, sports co- Like, I don't know, man. That's just a really- I, I cannot stand that part of Raw when it was, like, the Street Profits and the Viking Raiders doing sports, you know, stuff back and forth and the dunk contest or whatever whatever, and the basketball, and the putt-putt golf, and the ninjas, and the, you know, the Akira Tozawa, and all that stuff. That was just not good television, man. I'm so glad that that is kind of past us now, and this matchup was fun, though. I thought this was a really great one. You, I, I, I'd i say this one was, I was just super happy to see the Viking Raiders on my TV, on this pay-per-view, getting an opportunity against a quality opponent. Omos looked pretty good in his role. I thought the, the spots that they were doing were clever. It was a pretty good one, man. I think this is the right decision to have AJ Styles and Omos win. I agree with it. I'm 
I'm good with that. I guess we're going to see where we go from here, but it was just a nice, comforting watching tag team wrestling match here on Money in the Bank. But the Viking Raiders do come up short to AJ Styles and Omos. And next up, guys, we have the WWE Championship match. Bobby Lashley and Kofi Kingston coming back here, man. A lot of rumors swirling. A lot of fans saying, you know, Kofi Mania is going to come back. Big E is going to win the money in the bank. It's going to be all of these different things, Brad. Well, I don't think so, Brad. Kofi Kingston rocking the Skeletor gear. He looked very sick. I would love to see that in a figure form, even though you know they'd give him the god-awful John Cena lower legs that would be terrible to stand. You know they'd do it. I still wouldn't mind the figure. It would be a great figure. But Bobby Lashley looked super dominant in this match, man. He mopped the floor with Kofi. Did Kofi even get a move in? I know a lot of people are going to be upset about this. The only thing I have to say, Brad, is what about when KO and Braun Strowman fought that one time at that one pay-per-view and Braun Strowman completely buried KO? Now you Kofi fans can see how much it sucks when one of your boys goes down in flames like that. I don't like that. I thought that they were going to give us the beat down of a lifetime and then the super great comeback near falls but still end up falling short, but they did not do that. They literally gave him the dominant win straight up and I guess it calls for a good story building up Bobby for, you know, Brock and whoever's next, Goldberg, and whoever the hell he takes on next. That is the literal story that they're trying to tell here, that uh, you know, Kofi's no match for Bobby, and Bobby's supposed to be on the level of Brock and Goldberg. That's literally what they were trying to tell us here, so we're gonna see a Goldberg slash Brock Lesnar fight level for Brock, or for Bobby Lashley, I'm sorry, at the next show. Uh, that That's what I'm calling here, but Bobby Lashley wins in dominant fashion, and it sucks so much to see, but at the same time, I understand it for the storyline purposes. Next up, guys, was a Raw Women's Championship match Charlotte going against Rhea. Probably the match that I was probably the least looking forward to just because I'm sick of seeing these two lock up. I don't really like Charlotte in the main event scene here, but you know what, Brad? Where else are they going to put her? You know, like, where, what are they going to do with her except put gold on her? And they do it again, man. Charlotte wins her 18 million Raw Women's Championship, and yeah, she's she's the new champion. It was a great match. I'm not going to lie to you. It was a really good match. I thought the back and forth was good. She she I think she literally just went, she went into business for herself, started flicking the crowd off. I thought that was great. Really good energy in this matchup. Really good matchup between the two. I mean, we kind of knew it would probably be pretty good. I was just sick of seeing it. But man, this was pretty impressive. I have to give props where it is due. But Rhea losing the Raw Women's Championship. I mean, I don't I don't even know what to say. Without Becky in the division, without Ronda in the division, the way they've been booking these ladies, it's just hard to get behind and care about what they do. You know what I'm saying? So, I don't know. Great matchup, no doubt. But I just want to care about these characters more. You know what I'm saying? So, I think when Becky comes back, and it looks like that's probably what they're going to set up for, I bet Becky returns tomorrow and we have our SummerSlam Becky versus Charlotte number 80 you know what I'm saying we'll see about it man but if that happens then Charlotte will be a transitional champion in which Becky will win or we'll have a triple threat at SummerSlam I don't know man but God just bring Becky back please Jesus Next up, guys, was our Men's Money in the Bank ladder match, a matchup that I was looking forward to for the whole entirety of the show, man. What a lineup we had right here, and what a just great matchup this was. I really enjoyed this one thoroughly. You know, I really wanted KO or Seth Rollins to win the thing, but at the end of the day, you know, I was pretty much happy with everybody winning except for maybe Drew McIntyre just because I didn't want to see him in the main event yet again after that long time period, you know, kind of wanted to see something fresh, something new there. But the matchup was epic. Like, from the opening bell, it was some back and forth. I'd say maybe the first third besides like the opening bell it, it, like it entered a period where it started off fast then it entered kind of a cold period but after that man they hit the ground running and it was tons of fun great sequences great spots back and forth I love the interactions we got I would have liked to see maybe 10 more minutes longer but if you know the money in the bank you know that it's kind of like a, a short explosion of a matchup where it's just really quick pace and we get out of there but really fun matchup man at the end of the day Big E hits a massive big ending off the ladder to Seth Rollins to capture the men's money in the bank Bank. I did not see that coming. I mean, don't get me wrong. I saw the betting lines. I saw all the rumors. I saw the things saying that he was going to win. But at the end of the day, I didn't know if they would pull the trigger. They pulled the trigger and Big E is your Mr. Money in the Bank. Really interesting stuff going forward. I really like, would have liked to seen Rollins get that two-time Mr. Money in the Bank. You know, it ties into the Edge, Roman Reigns storyline, all of those different things. He still could, you know, but really fun ride, man. Huge congrats to Big E. I'm so happy for him and everything like that. I think that he's going to do great things once, you know, his time is called. Hopefully, we'll get a world championship out of him before the end of the year. Calls for some great things going on in the WWE Championship race or the Universal Championship race. I would imagine it's probably going to be Bobby Lashley because you tie into Kofi and things like that, especially after he got destroyed earlier. It should be very interesting indeed to see where that leads us and the New Day and all of that stuff. But what a fun ride, man. Tons of great spots in this thing. I think everybody looked like a superstar. I would have liked to see maybe some more aerial type stuff from Ricochet and maybe one huge spot from KO off a ladder, but I understand it. It was still really fun 
fun matchup and not like and it was enjoyable man I definitely enjoyed the matchup what did you guys think about it who did you want to win the money in the bank I almost had to give away 600 free WWE action figures on my Twitter if you know what I'm talking about but Big E wins man excellent and for our main event, ladies and gentlemen, the Universal Championship on the line, Edge battling Roman Reigns, a matchup that I was very much looking forward to ever since Edge, you know, came back after the WrestleMania matchup, man. I was super hyped for this to see him back in the ring. What a just barn burner of a matchup, man. Like, this reminded me of a classics, like, Ruthless Aggression era style matchup where, you know, it was just ground and pound. They, you know, they took the life out of each other. They, it was really slow burning. It was very, very intense. I loved this match. It was very enjoyable. I enjoyed it the whole way through. Very good stuff telling the story back and forth. I love the shenanigans that we got in this matchup. If you guys missed the, this matchup, you definitely got to go back and check it out. Edge went with the sick AF red gear. Hopefully we'll get an elite of that. Really fun, man. Just overall really, really fun. I mean, it pretty much set itself up beautifully, man. What I wanted coming out of this show was two different matchups going into SummerSlam, and it looks like we're going to be getting both of them, and I cannot freaking wait, man. It's going to be so enjoyable, bro. It it is a great time for the crowds to be back because it seems like WWE is heading in a great direction right now. I can't wait for Friday Night SmackDown, bro, man. Like, with Rollins and Edge and what we're about to discuss right now, bro, this is going to be insanity. But this matchup was great. You definitely got to go watch it if you guys missed it. A thousand percent go watch it before I cut your legs off. All right. So near the end of the matchup, man, the referee goes down. Charles Robinson goes down. He's holding his knee like selling a fake. He's selling a knee injury, right? Well, Edge has like the STFU or the crossface lock locked in on Roman Reigns with the part of a chair and you know Roman's giving way and giving way he's wearing down real fast out comes the Monday Night Messiah kicks Edge in the back of the skull to get him out of there they battle back and forth Roman again it looks like Edge has the matchup one he kicks out at two very close near fall with a new referee even though he did kick out before the referee got there the, the the crowd totally made him you know whiff right there however Seth Rollins would come back down and take away Edge's focus spear to Edge one two three Three, Roman does retain. Seth Rollins gets in the ring, beats the hell out of Edge. They do battle. They end up getting outside of the ring, going to the outside, going through the crowd, beating the hell out of each other. So we are, in fact, getting Edge versus Seth Rollins. But after that, Roman Reigns gets on the mic, and, you know, he says, now you can, now the world can acknowledge me as the head of the table. And about that time, Brad, I issue not. I literally said to my wife, I said, all right, now give me Cena and bam, Brad, the music hits, and out comes the GOAT himself rocking the damn Green Bay Packers looking gear. John Cena comes out, and I'm literally hyped. I popped super hard for this. If you guys did not know, he's my GOAT. He's my favorite wrestler of all time, so I was losing my mind. It was at a great moment, just a great ending to the show. I was like, all right, send us home happy. Send us home happy. Boom, there it was. He comes down to the ring. He gets up in Roman's face, says, you can't see me, gets on the turnbuckle, and we fade to black. What? a great ending to the show. These are two top level programs for SummerSlam, man, and you like, I know that we want Brock versus Bobby. I know we're probably going to get Goldberg versus Bobby, which is okay. I really don't want to see Goldberg again at all. I would much rather see Brock Lesnar, but if we can get John and Roman and then Edge and Seth, my God, what do you want, Brad? That's two programs that I can absolutely get behind, no doubt, and the rest of what we got going on, man, it's going to be a special time for SummerSlam, but I was super shocked to see John Cena what a great ending to the show overall. But that wraps up Money in the Bank 2021. I was so happy to see crowds back. It was such a great experience to see crowds back and just see them out there doing their thing, man. That was awesome for me. They really made the night. Shout out to the crowd. I literally, it's crazy because me and my wife actually talked about going. We almost booked flights and got a hotel and got floor seats and everything for this show. We ended up not doing it, obviously, but we were super close to doing it. Now I kind of wish we had done it because we would have got to see the goats return right there. But at the end of the day, man, great show. Not everything was perfect for sure, but a huge shout out to Big E. We're going to see where this thing goes, man, but that was, that was definitely interesting. It was a great way to see fans back but that does it for my review man let me know what you guys thought of everything down in the comment section below did you guys enjoy money in the bank 2021 let me know down below man really hope we can get brock lesnar on for SummerSlam, but we'll have to see but thank you guys for watching subscribe to the channel and don't cross the line like nikki winning winning the money in the bank you cross